This morning, we're going to continue to talk. Last week, we started talking about prayer and looking at the prayer of Jabez in 1 Chronicles chapter 4. And uh, as we were looking at this prayer, it's a prayer that he lifted up that obviously um, God uh, showed favor with. Um, and Jabez experienced much blessing in his life. We talked about how his name was Jabez, which mean, which meant he he caused pain. He caused pain uh, to his mother at at uh, his birth, and it was a name that he was sort of labeled with. and And we we talked about last week how he became a very honorable man. And this prayer was a prayer that was lifted up. And one of the things that I I want you to to recognize is that. As he prayed this prayer, I don't think it was a prayer uh, of prosperity, if you want to call it that. Sometimes, you know, we will look at a prayer like this and go, well, it just means that God, uh, we want God's blessing to come upon us, that we may have, maybe have more financial wealth and that nothing goes wrong in our lives and those kinds of things. And, you know, um, it, it, it's maybe at some point a wrong way to look at it. But I think there's, there's so much that we can pull out of this prayer that can be very applicable to our lives and what we would want to see God do within our lives. First Chronicles 4.10, this is a prayer that he lifted up. And Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. We read, and God granted his request. You know, as Jabez prayed this prayer, I see it as a prayer for challenge and for growth that he wanted within his life to be able to serve the kingdom of God somehow in some way. And for us, as, as we look at this prayer and say, how can we make this a part of our lives? I would hope that we would be able to find purpose in this prayer, that God could use us, that God could take this prayer as, as we apply it to who we are, to be able to really give us the opportunity to be able to serve him in, in a way in which it ultimately becomes real worship to him. It's a challenge for us to actually do something. You know, how often do we lift up our prayers or how often do we say, oh, I would like to do this, and when it comes right down to it, we don't get it done. Jabez lifted up this prayer because he wanted to see something take place. And it's a prayer that I think we can grab hold of. The first thing Jabez tells us is he says, bless me. Lord, bless me. So what does that look like, and, and what does it mean when we say that? We, when someone sneezes, you know, we'll go, bless you. Um, and a lot of times we go, oh, thank you, but we don't maybe necessarily put a lot of thought into it. And when we say, God bless me, what, what, is, what, is, that, what is that about? Well, to say, Lord bless me, we're, we're making a solemn vow with him. It's something that we see is important in our relationship with him. And when we ask for blessing, what we're wanting God to do within our lives is to invoke like a divine favor upon us. That he would place his hand upon us. And that he would bring the benefits that he has upon us, that he would be able to give us those benefits. It means basically that we're willing to turn over our lives to God. If we want God to bless us, it means that we, get, got to, we have to give ourselves to him. You know, how often are we saying, God, I want you to bless me, and yet we continue to run our lives the way we want to run them. We make the decisions about who we are and what we're going to do. We allow the busyness of the world to control us, to consume us. And, and as we're caught up in all this stuff, we're saying, God, bless me. Lord, please bless me. If we want to receive God's blessing, we have to be willing to give ourselves completely over to him. When we don't, it holds us back. It holds us back from being able to fully grab hold of what that blessing is about. You know, there was a man who wanted to change the world. 
And as he got out into the world, what he discovered was the world was way too big. All right, there were many, too many things that he wasn't able going to, going to be able to solve. And so he decided, okay, forget trying to change the world. I'm just going to try to change my country. And as he started to do that, what he discovered was there were a lot of crooked politicians and there were these special interest groups that were always wanting something. And he, he found it way too complicated. And so what he thought was, well, instead of my country, maybe I'll just try to change my neighborhood. He starts going to his neighbors, trying to make that change there. And all he got from them was them closing their doors on him, shutting the windows. They wanted no part to do with him. So he thought, well you know what, maybe I can change my family. And as he worked to change his family, he started to see his children rebel more and more and his wife threatening divorce. And finally, he came to the point where he said, you know what, maybe all I need to focus on is changing myself. And when he started to recognize and realize that he needed to change himself and when he worked at changing himself, that's when he changed the world. And I think when we talk about God bless me, part of that is, is we got to be willing to make that change. We need to be willing to change ourselves in order to receive God's blessing within our lives. It begins with us. When we say God bless me, what we're asking for is unlimited and unfathomable riches from God. We want to experience the fullness of who God is within our lives, his goodness as he lays it upon us. And it takes us far beyond the realms of maybe what we experience within this world that ultimately is only temporary. In Proverbs 10, 22, in the Message Bible, it says this, God's blessing makes life rich. Nothing we do can improve on God. God's blessing is what makes life rich. And when we say, Lord, bless me, what we're saying is, Lord, make my life rich. May I fully experience why you put me in this world. May, may you, you bring this blessing down upon me that I can fully experience what you've created me to do and who you want me to be. In Proverbs, in Psalm 29, 11, we are reminded that it ultimately has nothing to do with us, but it has everything to do with God. See, in verse 11 there, it says, The Lord gives strength to his people, and it's the Lord. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Or in Psalm 115, 15, it says, May you be blessed by the Lord, the maker of the heaven and the earth. May God bless us. Often at the end of a church service, I will use this benediction that comes from Numbers chapter 6, 24 through 26. You've heard me say it. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. But as you leave, I'm wanting to see God bless your life. So as we lift up this prayer... Of, of saying, Lord, bless me as Jabez did. This is what we can grab hold of. We need to, first of all, be willing to say, ask. Go ahead and ask. Ask for God's blessing. Don't be afraid to do that. And need, you need to recognize that there's a need to be blessed. I think each one of us wants to be blessed. And so for us to ask God to bless us, is one of, the, one of those wonderful ways in which then God can shower that blessing down upon us, but we need to recognize it. Jabez said, bless me indeed. And his prayer was in rec recognition of the need to be blessed. His prayer was an attempt to really receive God's favor within his life. You know, God can take whatever circumstances you're dealing with, and he can work through them. And I think that's the beauty of a relationship with God. No matter what we're going through, no matter what situation we're dealing with, God can take that, he can work through it, and what can he do? He can bring blessing into it. 
And if we're praying, God, bless me, no matter what the situation might be, we will see God's hand work and blessing will come. Jacob, in Genesis, uh, his name meant supplant, um, one who is uh, supplanted or one who tricks. And we read how that was carried out when he stole the birthright from his brother Esau. And in the process of that, there became this conflict between the two of them. Jacob fled for fear that his brother Esau might kill him. And eventually, they made reconciliation with each other. And we get to chapter 32 in Genesis, and Jacob is alone with God. And we read this starting at verse 24. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wretched as he wrestled with the man. And then the man said, let me go for it's daybreak. But here's what Jacob replied. I will not let you go unless you bless me. Jacob wanted blessing. And the man asked him, what is your name? And Jacob, Jacob, he answered. And then the man said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. It was at that moment that Jacob started to really receive God's blessing. Jacob recognized that. That was the request that he made, that he would be blessed and we need to recognize that we, we too want to be blessed. The second thing is we can go ahead and ask. And we can go ahead and ask for this, this blessing because we can recognize the one who blesses. And when you think about it, the one who blesses is God himself. And it's only God who ultimately can bring blessings down upon us. You know, it's easy for us to go, well, you know, I, I find blessing in my family, or I, I am blessed by my friends, I'm blessed by my finances, or my social status. It's easy for us to say, I've been blessed in those areas, but ultimately, when you think about it, you were blessed in those areas because what? Because God has brought those things into your life. He has brought that blessing down through them to you. Blessing comes from God. And God cannot bless us unless he has us. We have to be willing to give our entire being over to him. You know, God desires a full recognition of himself as a source in which we can be blessed. It comes from God. Hebrews 11.6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Our blessing comes from God. God says he rewards, he, he blesses, but we have to look to him for that to happen. We have to seek him in order to, to grab hold of that. And when we ask for God's blessing, there's three things we can recognize. First of all, we recognize God's will. What he is trying to do for each one of us. The second thing is we will recognize God's power. What he's trying to do through you. And the third thing we will recognize is God's purpose. What he's trying to do around you. In 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9, we read this, What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who loved him. You see, it's because of our love for God, it's because of God's love for us, it's he who is the one who brings blessing to us. So go ahead and ask. And go ahead and ask, not only recognizing it comes from God, but that there's a certainty to be blessed. That when we lift up this prayer, that God promises he will bring blessing if we come to him with the right attitude, the right mindset, and the right heart. 
Jabez knew it was God's nature to bless. And we read at the end of that verse that God did bless him. He heard his prayer and he answered it. You know, sometimes when we ask someone something, we'll, we'll go like this. Hey, I got a question for you, or I've got something I want to ask you. And then at, before you get it out, you sort of hesitate and you go, oh, never mind. Oh, never mind. Forget it. You know, that person, no, 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 tell me what it is. No, never mind. Forget it. And, and I sometimes, why do we do that? I think at times maybe we do that because we have low expectations of what that answer is going to be. And maybe the question is, is, do we sometimes do that with God? Where we're thinking about, you know, lifting up this prayer, saying, Lord, bless me. But then we're sort of like, oh, oh, God, God, forget it, forget it. Because we have low expectations on what God can do for us. God wants to bless you. God wants to bless me. And I want you to hear that. You are a perfect candidate for God's blessing. And again, the scriptures are filled with verses that talk about how he wants to bring that blessing down upon us. In Psalm 512, Surely, Lord, you bless the righteous. You surround them with your favor as with a shield. Ezekiel 34, 26. I will make them in the places surrounding my hill a blessing. I will send down showers in season, and there will be showers a blessing. In Ephesians 1, 3. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. You know, what an exciting thing that we can pray for. God, bless me. And the beauty of that is, is not only that, but the anticipation of what he's going to do. What kinds of blessings is he going to be, bring down uh, upon us? You know, if, if we're sincere in that, if I'm going, Lord, bless me, how can there not but not want to be an excitement within my heart to go, I can't wait to see what he's going to do to, to, to bring blessing into my life. That there would be anticipation, there would be an excitement to, to how he's going to answer that prayer. Jabez said, Lord, bless me. It's a prayer that I want to challenge you with this, at least part of it, is to say, in 2016, Lord, will you bless me? And be willing to give yourself entirely over to him to be able to experience the fullness of that blessing within your life. Now the second thing in his prayer that he, he asks or requests is he says, enlarge my territory. Now I don't think, again, it means that it's just give me more land or give me more animals or give me more wealth, but it's enlarge my territory in such a way in which God can take what I have and grow it for his purposes, for, for his kingdom work. And often we limit God in this, this part of it. And when we say, God, enlarge my territory, what we're saying to God is, I'm going to take the limitations off of maybe what I want to do and what I want to see happen, and I'm going to turn it over to you, and I'm going to allow you to do whatever you want within my life, and I'm going to trust you in it. God, increase my territory. Allow me to be able to be that witness, to be that example, to be that individual that is going to grow your kingdom in any way possible. It's saying, God, it's no longer going to be about me. But God, I want the Holy Spirit to come into my life, to move me, to stir me, the Holy Spirit to do the work within me that only the Holy Spirit can do. Saying, God, I want you, I'm giving you full reign to increase my territory, however it might be. So how can we increase our territory? What does it look like? I think there's three things that we can, we can grab to increase our territory. The first one is, is it demands vision. It's one thing for us to say, 
God, increase my territory. It's another to say, what does that really look like for you? If you were to lift up that prayer, increase my territory, what vision would you have for God to increase your territory for his sake? What would it look like? Are there people within your life that maybe you would have the opportunity to share Jesus with? Is that a way in which your inter- territory would increase? Would it potentially be financially that God blesses you and as he does, it allows you to increase your territory in the kind of giving that you give? What vision could you have for having your territory increased? You know, without a vision, it's not going to go anywhere. I was thinking about that as a church. If we were as a church to lift up God, increase our territory, what would it look like? And the first thing, obviously, that comes to my mind is the fact that there are people around us who don't know Jesus. In fact, statistically, they've done some sort of surveys, if you want to call that, within our community, in a seven-mile radius of of our church here, there are about 6,000 people. And according to the statistics from which they pulled out of there, in that, that, of that 6,000 people, there's only about 2,000 that are actually going to church somewhere. That means there's 4,000 people in a seven-mile radius of here that either don't know Jesus or know Jesus, but have found no value in what church can do for them. And, and most likely of those 4,000 people, not too many of them are growing in a relationship with Jesus Christ. So if we're saying, God, increase our territory, what opportunities do we want to take to reach out to those 4,000 people and say, how can we share, how can we show, how can we allow them to come into a relationship with Jesus? What is it going to take? Now, maybe part of that vision is saying, okay, let's not get overwhelmed by the big number and say, let's look at where we're at as a church. If if we were to have the vision to say, here's the challenge I lay out to you. In this next year, as a member of this church, I want you to interact with five people within our community, within that seven-mile radius that either doesn't know Jesus or is struggling in their faith that, that has sort of turn them off from from what church is about. Five people in this next year that you would become committed to pray for and say, God, I just simply want you to enlarge my territory by five people. We're a congregation of 400 communicant members. If every one of us as a communicant member would say, this is a goal I'm going to place and put, out, put forth in 2016, we would reach 2,000 of that 4,000 people in this first year. It's quite a vision. But how amazing would it be? What blessing would we receive in that? And would our territory increase? Most definitely. But there's beauty and joy knowing that it would increase because God is at work. The Holy Spirit is moving and it's changing lives. It's changing a community. In Matthew 9, 35 through 38, we read these words. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, that's the vision, therefore to send out workers into his harvest field. Think about what God could do with this church if we were willing to cast and and move forward with a vision like that. But it doesn't end there. There's a couple more steps. Not only does saying increase our territory require really that vision, it also demands us to believe it, to have the faith. We can sit here and go, oh man, there's no way that that could happen. There's no way. 
But if we don't have the faith to believe it, then I'll tell you it's not going to happen. We're going to be the same church in 2016 that we were maybe in 2015 or 14 or for the last hundred years. If we're willing to believe that God can increase our territory and we're willing to allow ourselves to be used by God, then we're going to see what God does with it and it's, it's through God who can make it happen. But we have to be willing to say, I believe. There's a side of me that says, it can happen here. We could reach those 2,000 people. I believe it can happen if we're willing to commit ourselves to making it happen. Matthew 19, 26, we read, Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. That's the key. If we believe, it means that we're not going to do it on our own. God is going to be alongside of there. God can do the impossible. I can't, but God can. And if the Holy Spirit is working in my life, we can see our territory increased because of our willingness to believe. So it demands vision. It demands faith. And the last thing is, it demands work. We can sit here and say, I believe. But if we're not willing to put the work in, if we're not willing to grab hold of those five people to make that difference, our territory will not increase. As individuals, if we're saying, God, increase my territory, and yet when God's calling us to what and how we can increase that territory and we don't do anything with it, it doesn't do us any good. I'd like to stand before you this morning and tell you that at one point or another, I probably could have been a millionaire, but I'm not. You know, I've I've got all these cool inventions and ideas, these these things that I think would make the world a little bit better. And, and, you know, unfortunately, what's going to happen is someday someone's going to invent this thing that I've had in my mind. I'm going to be like, I knew I should have did it. But you know why it's not happening? Because I'm not willing to put into work. If I were willing to be committed to put into the work, and maybe we could make all the difference. If we want our territory to be enlarged, it means we're going to have to put into work. God might be calling us to, to this or that kind of ministry or to working with this person or that person. And sometimes we look at it and go, oh, that means time and energy. And I don't have that kind of stuff. Well, our territory isn't going to be enlarged if we're not willing to do something about it. A great idea is only a great idea if nothing gets done with it. But only when you're willing to put the work into it do you get the result. It's what it comes down to. I had up, up here post-it notes. Simple post-it notes. Almost all of us use them at, at some point or another. Little sticky adhesive on the one side to be able to stick it somewhere. You know how they were invented? A guy by the name of Art Fry was sick and tired of during choir practice at church his pieces of paper falling out of the hymnal were with the songs that they were practicing to sing. He, he, he got sick of the pieces of paper and thought there's got to be a better way. So he developed a little bit of this adhesive that he could put on the paper to stick it to a page where it wasn't going to tear the page, but he'd be able to pull it back off. He saw the vision of what that could be. He believed he could carry that out. And ultimately, he put in the work, he put in the effort to make that happen. And in 2012, he generated over a billion dollars in revenue because of post-it notes. Post-it notes are in over 100 countries throughout the world. And I think of that, and I think something so simple like this, what happened was he had a vision, he believed, he was willing to put the work in, And do you think his territory has increased? It sure has. The influence of something as simple as a post-it note. And think about what God can do if we're willing to allow ourselves to say, God, increase my territory. 
And we're willing not only to, to cast that vision, we're willing to believe it, and we're willing to say, I'll do whatever it takes, I'll work at it so that it might happen. I'm sure Jabez put the work in. I'm sure he put the effort in. He just, just didn't sit there and say, God increased my territory and it increased. He had to do something about it. It's the same thing for us. So my challenge in this year is you lift up this prayer, Lord, bless me, increase my territories. Are you willing to allow it to be increased? So as we finish today, I encourage you to seek God's blessing. I encourage you to be looking to how God can increase your territory. How God can use you in the, the kingdom work that he can do through you. I, um, some of you got them. And if you didn't, you can either get one from me or they're on the two podiums in the back. But just maybe as a reminder, I, I would encourage you to take one of these cards that has really this prayer from Jabez on it. And you will see on there the four parts. Next week we're going to talk about the other two. But it just says, bless me, increase my territory, be with me, keep me from harm. And what I want to encourage you with is I wanted to give you something in hand to take with you. Put it in your purse, put it in your wallet, tape it to your desk or to the mirror in your bathroom or, or wherever you might see it. If you need a couple of them, take a couple of them. I got plenty of them. And put them in areas where when you see it, it allows you to lift up this simple prayer. And it would be interesting, it would be fun at the end of the year if you were committed to this, to be able to have conversation and say, as you went through this year and you lifted up this prayer, now that we're at the end of the year, what did you see happen that you prayed for as we lifted up the prayer of Jabez? So grab one of these uh, when we're done. Like I said, during the back, two side things. Some of them, some of you I handed them out to as you're sitting here as you came into church this morning. Uh, but we want God to bless us. And we got, want God to increase our territory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word on this day. Lord, amidst all the genealogies that were listed in First Chronicles, you brought to us this prayer. Lord, I pray that you will challenge us with the words that came from your scriptures on this day. May your Holy Spirit move through them. Lord, we come before you saying, bless us. Shower your blessing down upon us. And Lord, we, we pray that as you bless us, you will also increase our territory. Allow us the opportunity to take our relationship with you to another level. To be willing, by the power of your Holy Spirit, to go out onto a world that is lost. To love those who are unloved. To come alongside and be able to help heal those who are hurting to be able to grow people into a relationship with you where they experience your love, your mercy, your grace, and your forgiveness. Lord, I pray that you will place, <laughs> I pray a burden upon our hearts. A burden for those people whom we know we need to build a relationship with, to interact with, to increase our territory, to make them a part of our lives. So that ultimately, we become a reflection of you. Thank you for this prayer. I can just see there's so much significance to the impact it can make upon our lives and our relationship with you. Allow us to grab hold of it in a way in which it will do so. And we ask this in your name, Lord Jesus.